Hi guys! Long time no see. It's been a month since I uploaded a video last. I actually kept on vlogging until like the 20th of August, but I don't have the time or the energy to edit any of those videos, so I kind of decided to make a monthly update instead, and I hope you will like it. Anyhow, so how are I? Um, I thought I would show you kind of all the crafts I've been doing the past month and then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my um, what's going on in my life and stuff like that. Uh, I like kind of the way uh, the Nietzsche podcast do it with uh, like finished objects and then work in progress and then kind of a little bit of um, stash enhancements and, and stuff like that. So I thought I'd do it in kind of that order and then I do a little bit of a, I kind of talk a little bit of uh, what's happening in my life and to finish it off I'm gonna do a little shop update. So I've kind of just put all of my things out in front of me here. I'm sitting at my craft table, that is my boyfriend's uh, kind of um, office um, counter and then I have my own at that corner so it's kind of in my craft room slash our office we usually could just call it the craft room but anyhow uh, so I have a lot of finished just objects and I wanted to show them to you and um, uh, I thought I start off with the cross stitching um, so the finished off object that I have this month, it's not fully finished, but it's finished without being hang on the wall. Uh, it is this. This is the Once Upon a Time Sampler by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I haven't stitched on this alone. So this is the whole piece I opted of adding 2017 at the bottom. It's sharded for 2014 because this is one of those uh, stitch longs, one of the longer ones from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, this piece have been going around the world. Uh, we were a gang of people, a gang of friends that decided that would be fun to do a round robin. So we made a, did a round robin, everyone picked their own projects. I picked uh, my Once Upon a Time sampler, I had one or two done on it. Uh, so my friends have all stitched one little box each on this one. Um, and now I, I got it home a couple of weeks ago and I finished off the border and the boxes that wasn't finished, which was the December and November boxes. So I finished off them uh, and the full border around and uh, now it's done. So yay, a fully finished project. So for my next fully finished project, I am going to show you some socks. So I got these sock blockers from Woodyco, they are awesome and I mainly use them to kind of photograph my socks. So let's start with the bigger socks. Um, these are a knit in some opal yarn. So this is opal yarn. These are a size like 42, 41 to 43 sock blockers and these are a little bit big on them so I think it's about size 44 and they are for my brother. Um, they ended up being for my brother. They were supposed to be for my uh, sister's sons, but they're way too big for them. Um, the pattern is the Yorkshire York Will socks from the uh, Knitting Expats um, sock club. She has been having a sock club running where you bought an ebook and you got a new pattern every month, and this was the August one, I think. So those are finished and off the needles. Um, the second pair of socks that I finished this month uh, is these. I um, can't really remember the pattern name, but it's also one of the uh, Knitting Expat sock pattern. Um, and my files apparently was downloaded. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, this uh, yarn I have dyed myself. I am dabbling in yarn dyeing. Uh, it's... I haven't decided if it's something I want to do professionally, but it's a lot of fun doing it um, 
just uh, playing along. This was the second skein I dyed up. I have one more of this yarn. It's a little bit of a tougher yarn, so these are going away to some nice person. Um, but yeah, it has a nice little cuff here and everything. So, second pair of socks finished. And I think that is all my finishes when it comes to uh, like knitting and stitching. However, I've been sewing a couple of things all for myself and I thought I'd show them too. So the first thing is my second um, frame cover. This is a, uh, this is for my Q-snap, it's for an eight inch Q-snap. So it's a cover. And you like, you probably look at it like, but didn't you have one like that before? Well, the outer sh fabric is actually the same as in my previous one. Um, because the previous one I did um, had some issues. It was a little bit too tight for the frame. Uh, and on top of that, uh, it did a, didn't have enough elastics in the elastic part. So it didn't hold the fabric for a head very much. It did hold the fabric for smaller ones. So I decided to make a similar one. However, this time I'm using my own hand dyed fabric on the inside in like a grayish, bluish tone and I really like it. I always, all of mine of these are double sided. I like making them double sided because I don't want any seams on the inside. Um, and also it kind of makes them, I can use them in both directions, you know. Uh, so if I don't want the black one, I can have a grey one. So yeah. Another finish. Then we have the finish that is um, the pride right now. And that is my new knitting bag. Um, I knit socks uh, to and from work. And I actually also knit at work. I am a software developer and we are using a coding style called mob programming. When you do mob programming, you have one person sitting by the keys and entering all the functions and everything. And then the rest of the people are basically telling you what to do. And by working in a group uh, in that way, you will... Uh, get a better result because you have more people looking at the same problem at the same time and therefore they can input and we can discuss and we can get a good code out of it directly instead of having to do a lot of code reviews um, or getting code into production that just doesn't work for the rest of the company. So uh, it's a really good way of, of coding. It's also often more productive. Uh, but it also means that I will have times when I'll, I will not be the one sitting by the computer, but I will be the one who kind of spews my ideas and I can knit at the same time, which I think is awesome. However, uh, back to the bag. Um, this is a knitting bag. I can have it hanging from my wrist and that is how I usually wear it. Have it hang it like this and then I have my knitting coming out of it. I actually use this as my handbag. Uh, so inside I added some pockets in the same kind of cool foxy fabric so they are split in two and I can fit my wallet, my mobile phone, keys, everything. Um, this one I have put uh, another blue mottled fabric on the inside which also is a hand dyed because it actually matched the, fo the blue foxes on the outside and I thought it would be a nice purple colour. I choose to have a green zipper like the green foxes um, and in it I have my project but that will come to works in project. Um, also chose to, uh, yeah it's got a little bit of kitty hair, it's, it's a, you, I use this a lot, I have it with me everywhere. Um, but I have a thicker fabric at the bottom so that it is more stable and um, doesn't destroy the cute little foxes. So yeah. That's my last finished object uh, of the day or the month. Um, I'm hoping to have one more finished project this month, but I thought I would record this now and uh, then I will show you probably next month. Um, so yeah, let's move on to works in projects. And with works in project, let's go on the opposite direction. Let's start with knitting. 
Um, just realized I forgot to bring one of the knitting in. Well, we, we start with this and then I pause and you'll see. So yeah, the first uh, work in progress, progress uh, today is my sock. And I actually have what they call is a hoe, a half object. So this is my hoe, which is my sock. Again, this is the uh, York Will pattern uh, from the Expat Knitter. I really like this pattern because it's very simple, but still got some texture. And you can have it, it's more, it's not like all swirls and stuff. It's kind of boxy, which makes it more easily worn from any kind of type of person. Um, but yeah, uh, it's regular yarn and um, it's, I really like it. The thing is, I asked my sister, if you want a, um, you want a pair of socks, which color do you want? And it's like, I want it to be yellow and orange and red. Those are my favorite colors. I have this yarn, which we kind of figured out might actually come from her stash from the beginning. Uh, we've been having a, con a couple of swaps where she gets stuff like nail polishes and stuff like that from my stash and I get yarn from hers because she's not knitting that much right now. So this is reg a regular yarn. Um, I actually turned the heel yesterday and I did this this morning uh, while uh, waking up. So I actually got pretty much done from, from the marker here. This is my little progress marker. Um, this I got for like an hour of knitting. So hoping to get this done today because there has been going on a stitch along for uh, Sue Knit Picky, uh, the uh, Diary of Lambda Toast, which you know me, I love my Lambda Toast yarn. Well, she's been um, having a sock knit along. She always, oh, yeah, I think this is the fifth year in a row. She has a sick sock knit along where you can knit as many socks as you want and then at the end of the knit along you can actually win prizes from that period uh, during that period so I've been knitting socks like a crazy person and I really want to get these finished before the 31st for many other reasons which I'm going to talk about in uh, projects that's going up on the needles but I'm gonna take a, a quick a pause and I'll be right back. So for my next work in progress when it comes to knitting, it's actually a pretty big project. Um, I have started to knit a sweater. <laughs> so I've been wanting a knit sweater and every year around this time of year, it's uh, late August, it is raining, it is fall, I want to wear all the knits. I want to wear all the knitted sweatshirts and I never find in store the ones I like. I want to have a long, a longer body so that I can put it over my bum and uh, I also, I don't know, I usually, usually don't like the necklines. So I t this year I decided well I am going to knit one and I'm going to knit it in some luxurious, soft, really nice, that is also one problem. Usually when you find wool sweaters they itch like crazy. So I have started my own. This is not much to see really. This is the front side though. Uh, this is the Ease shirt. Um, don't remember who it's from but if you look at Ravelry and look at E-A-S-E -E, um, you will find the Ease sweater. Uh, it is knit in some Malib Malibrigo um, Azul Profundo, which is a beautiful, deep, dark um, blue tone. Um, and I'm on my second and no, third and fourth skein. So, uh, as this is knit in um, kind of hand dyed, uh, Malibrigo, uh, yeah, Malibrigo is kettle dyed. Um, it is, uh, you can easily get pooling if you use one and the same skin of yarn. Also, different skins, even from the same dye bath, can have variegations. So, I, I am knitting every other row. So, two rows from one ball and two rows from another, and then I just switch them. 
I have the switching uh, seam, I think it is, yeah, it's under the armpit. So it's over here, so you can see it just a little bit, but because it's under the armpit I really don't care. Uh, it's knitted in the round so you don't have to uh, do any seaming. Uh, and when you have finished the, the the kind of body, you will just pick up the uh, ones you put on your yellow thread here. And I think you add a couple more and then you just knit the arms. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward forward pattern and I'm having a lot of fun. However, I do think I will be doing a couple of uh, changes to the pattern. Still haven't tried it on. Yeah, I should have done that, but I haven't. Um, but I think I am going to need to, I'm coming to a point where I have started to increase for your hips or for your uh, waist um, or after your waist and I think I'm going to have to increase that a couple more times. Also I have a pretty long body or top body so hopefully um, there will be room in the measurements to do that. I'm probably putting a couple of inches. I did a little bit of a count and I think I'm going to put on uh, three to four extra inches on the length of it so that it will kind of shape around and uh, hit me just underneath my buttocks or a little bit lower than that so that I can have leggings on with this wonderful shirt. So yeah, that is my Ease shirt that I'm knitting and I'm knitting on some, that is also one, I'm, eating, I'm knitting this on some 4.5 millimeter needles the pattern says to knit on six millimeter needles for the first part and then go down to four millimeter needles. And both, I don't, I think it's a strange big jump between needles, but also I actually did a very small swatch and on six millimeter needles, I got way too loose gauge. It just didn't work out. So I went down to my next size needles that I had at home and it makes it a little bit smaller. That is also one of the reasons why I'm going to add some uh, extra extra increases at the bottom. Um, this is actually living in this beautiful sock bag by um, Lamb de Toes with these really adorable buttons from a um, designer um, which has a store on Etsy called Afternoon Fika. Um, she is called Ida, She's, she comes from Sweden. Uh, I found her on Twitter and she does these beautiful and really adorable little uh, creatures. These are, I don't remember, it's a dog. Uh, but she did uh, just recently release a series of kitties, however not in buttons yet they will come as button later on but yeah so it's living in this for a while but this is starting to be too small for it and I still haven't added the three other balls of yarn so I'm going to make or get a sweater sized bag because I really need that but yes that was all the knitting in progress so I thought I'd show you my stitching in progress. I think I have a project or two that has been lying in a box but it's been lying there for this month so I've only been working on the Once Upon a Time sampler and on this. Da, 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 da. Here you go, this is the dragon, this is the blue dragon, it's heaven and earth design. I'm stitching this on 25 count, not linen, um, even weave two over one um, in the DMC as charted and as you see I don't have very much left in the corner there but I uh, he he has been resting a while I've been uh, stitching on him basically almost every morning I uh, stitch in the morning I go up about an hour an hour and a half before I go to work and I do uh, some stitching and listening to some audiobooks. I think it's an awesome way to wake up. Uh, it makes me kind of soothed and relaxed when I go to, off to work um, so I'm not stressed and the day is a much better place. 
However, because I really want these my socks done before the end of today, uh, for the last couple of days I actually been um, knitting instead. But he is uh, coming back and getting some work done um, as soon as these socks are done. So yeah, that was all of my works in progress and um, then we have, I don't know what order I'm gonna do everything, that was hard. Uh, I'm gonna start by talking about uh, the project that is coming up, that would be awesome. Uh, and wait two seconds. So as I was saying about the, uh, as, as we did the cross stitch, then the knitting, then the knitting, then the cross stitch, and we start with the cross stitching again. So I uh, have actually ordered another stitch along, and I have a love-hate relationship with uh, both stitch alongs and knit alongs because I don't like to get stressed out but I'm a very competitive person also and I really like um, being a part of a stitch along and but the competitiveness in me sometimes like I didn't get this done before everyone else and therefore I won't do it uh, yeah stupid ideas but the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery uh, just recently uh, released that they are having a Halloween stitch along and I just had to be in it and do it. However, right now I don't have the fabric. I'm hoping to be able to dye it up today, maybe. But I wanted to show you what it's going to look, out, look like because I have done some test dyeing. So this is the kind of tone of the fabric. This is a little bit more white spotted uh, and I know why so I'm doing it a little bit differently. If you didn't know I have uh, newly ordered some new dyes. I am working with uh, professional dyes now for all the dyeing I do in my store and uh, this is a part, this is that dye or one of the colors anyhow. So I'm gonna do it in black. I'm gonna have a black fabric and I'm going to do it, it's gonna be all motley. It's gonna be more towards the purple black than the white tones. Um, but yeah, so this is the color of the fabric, but this is just pure cotton. So I have to dye up the proper ones. I'm gonna dye up some 32 count uh, glittery linen I think. I think that is going to be the fabric of my choice for this project. But yeah, so that is the what I'm going to be stitching or the plans I have in my stitching. I don't have that much plans otherwise but it starts tomorrow so yeah. <laughs> um, then we have the knitting, my plans for knitting. So we're gonna start off with a knit along. So um, the expat knitter uh, with the knitting at expat sorry I, I have a tendency to yeah have a problem with that name but the knitting expat she's also doing a road to rain back knit along shawl um, and it's a mystery knit along for you who don't know rain back I think it is like a wool and yarn and, and fair and courses and stuff. It's, it's a big thing in the US. Now I'm not going there I, this, but I thought it would be fun with a knit long shawl. The, uh, she said it was going to be a DK weight and you needed four skeins, two skeins of um, each color, so it's a two color shawl. And I decided I wanted to dye it because with these new professional dyes I also got some yarn dyes because I thought it would be fun. Now uh, this shawl calls for semi-solid or very slightly speckled yarns. So I went to semi for semi-solids. Uh, the first ones I dyed up is these. These are pistachio. The dye's name is actually pistachio. I haven't really changed anything. Because I'm so new to it, I don't know how the different colors react with each other. Uh, so this is just pure pistachio. 
Uh, one is a little bit lighter than the other one. Um, it has to do with heat. <laughs> so I know what I did, um, but I kind of like it. Um, however, it's a lot more yellow than I was expected. I was like, actually expecting to get a lot, a much more minty green, but I think this will work out pretty nicely anyhow. So that is the first color. The second color is this beautiful peacock blue, which is very similar to my uh, Azul Profundo. I think if I would do this darker, just get it deeper, it would be very, very similar to Azul Profundo. Um, both of them are glittery jar, and if you, I hope you can see it, it's super glittery, um, and it's very soft, um, super wash merino, so. Uh, but yeah, this is the second color, which is blue, and if you wonder about these little green things, it's because uh, I have added some extra places to bind the yarn, so it doesn't knot up on itself when you dye it, and I did that with just some acrylic I had lying around and that was green. But yeah, so those are the yarns I'm going to use for the mystery shawl. I have no clue how the shawl will look because it's a mystery shawl, <laughs> but we'll see. It has four different parts and it finishes off in October. So then I have the second knitting project and that is I after I finish these socks for my sister, I am going to do the last um, the last pattern in the sock knit along is also released tomorrow. Um, the shawl is released the second and I think the socks are released the first. Um, and I think, I haven't seen the pattern yet so I'm not sure if it will work. But I think I'm going to knit it in this, which is also a hand dyed of mine. Uh, it's got golden glitter. We're going to glitter everything. Um, and this is also a yarn I did just for fun. Um, I got a trial kit to start when I'm trying to learn how to dye and I got a, a sunflower yellow, a fire truck red and a blue, which I don't remember the whole name of, midnight blue by the way. And the midnight blue and the yellow I actually used to mix to get the green in this and then the blue is just the midnight blue. Um, but this is the fire truck red and the yellow mixed together and in some parts I really let them mix in the water and then they became orange. Um, so yay, this is the, the last of my dyed yarn. I have one skein left that is undyed, otherwise I have dyed up all of the test yarns that I bought last time. But yeah, that's all my projects. So let's talk a little bit about uh, life in in general. What is happening and why am I not um, doing it? Yeah, life now. Then I'm going to have some acquisitions and then I'm going to talk about the store. But, um, well, I got a new job and I think I talked about it um, because I started... No, I might not have talked about it. The 7th of August, I started a new job. Um, after going off my medications, the uh, uh, Plaquenil, which seems to have been one of the bigger issues with my health, still have joint problems, I still have migraine issues, especially right now when I'm um, just a couple of weeks away from getting my next dose of um, Botox. The Botox seems to work though, so yay! Uh, but I stepped off a lupus medication and I went from not being able to work to be able to work full time. And after doing that and during the last year or so I've been in contact with a company which I kind of really liked how they did things. It sounded to be a place where I wanted to work, but I was afraid to leave Madgin, which is my previous, um, the previous company I was working for. Um, one, because I wasn't healthy, and the other one was I was actually pretty happy there. Um, it's a really nice company to work for, but they were steadily growing bigger 
and I think I'm more suited to work in a smaller company. So I decided to switch companies and the 7th of August I started my new my new job and it's like finding home. It's like finding home. That is the strangest thing I ever been I'm feeling very comfortable there. I never felt this at home at the place so quickly. It's wonderful and I'm just so happy about it. But that also makes it that I have to make a whole bunch of uh, changes to my life. Um, I'm still there, very new there, so it's a whole bunch of, you know, I got a lot of anxieties due to people. Um, I have social anxieties. Um, I have what's called the imposter syndrome, which is apparently very common among any kind of um, profession where you are on a higher state. Um, basically, I feel like, hey, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not good enough. Uh, however, a part of me also knows that I am. So, yeah. It makes me a little bit tired at the end of the day, anyhow. So I haven't been able to give you any kind of vlog content because basically go up, work, go out, eat, maybe craft for a couple of hours and then go to bed. My life isn't super exciting. I don't mind, but that is how it is. Uh, also, I just don't have the time to edit daily it takes about an hour to edit a video i don't have the time for it so i thought this would be a better way to do it uh, but yeah i'm feeling a lot better uh, and even though i don't have as much time to do all the crafts that i want i'm actually really really happy and things are starting to work out for me so yeah that's kind of my update i don't really have that much more to say <laughs> about life it's going pretty great so let's talk about acquisitions. So my acquisitions uh, for the last month is the Azul Profundo that I showed you uh, with my shirt. It was seven balls of it. Um, but I also have bought a whole bunch of other yarns. So here's the thing. I have a favorite yarn dyer. Uh, she's called Amanda. <laughs> she owns the Etsy store called Lambda Toes. And if you want these kind of yarns, I would recommend really going after them now. She just announced that she is going to take a break in the beginning of next year because she wants to uh, do some rebranding of the store and stuff. And she wants to kind of be able to just concentrate on that. Uh, so really, if you love the things I'm gonna show you, go to a store, buy everything, because that's what I have done. So, I have a whole bunch here. I don't know how many of them I have showed you before. I don't think I've showed them all for you. But we're gonna go through them. We're gonna start with this. This is a Sweet Pea Sport. So it's, I bought this because I don't have any sport weight. I have fingering weight, and that's basically it. Um, I had, the reason why I dyed the DK weight was because I really wanted to see um, how how I can dye things. Uh, but also I don't have any DK in my stash. I have sock yarns because I have mainly been a sock knitter. But this is a sport weight yarn. It's called Macaroons and it's got this beautiful kind of beigey base and then a lot of different kind of speckles. Uh, you have the brown speckles and you have the kind of reds more of a coral red um, you even got some blues in it so this is beautiful so that's ski number one this is from two or three orders i have been going crazy did i say that i got a good substantial salary increase also yeah i bought all the yarn for it um this is the um, secret mermaid I love mermaids, so I just had to have this. Uh, so this is beautiful. It's a very light yarn, but it's kind of um, bluish lavender light. And then it has 
some red speckles and some navy blue speckles into it and it's just gorgeous. Uh, I have this which in, is an experiment. She mm. has a bunch of different experiments. I have bought a whole bunch of different experiments from her because I really love her yarns. Uh, experiments are yarn that um, she might or might not repeat. Uh, usually she is not a repeatable. This is just kind of a cream toned yarn with black speckles, purple speckles and blue speckles in it. Um, it's just gorgeous and it's uh, Experiment 097. I don't know if she had them there but yeah. And then I think this was the last yarn I bought in that time and that is Heartbreaker. Um, she came out with these in March and I love them and I wanted to buy them then but I didn't. Uh, but um, it's kind of a purplish brown. It's actually very much uh, working with the shawl, shawl I'm having right now. But it's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. It's her Valentine skein, I think. And then uh, yesterday I got a second... Um, I got my last order. She came out with a bunch of Halloween colorways and I think she has some that is coming up or has been just recently released in the Halloween colorways. But we're gonna start with this. This is called the Monster Dance Party and you have the greens and the purples uh, and the oranges and the blacks um, onto a kind of a deeper cream base, almost peach base. It's beautiful. We also have this, which is the Under, Under Wicked Sky, which is a grey purplish yarn. Beautiful, again, very Halloween-y. Um, and for the last one, it is this purpled with green and like red, almost terracotta, deep orange um, and green and black speckles. Have you have got even more of those reds here? It's just gorgeous. I just love her yarn and I just bought all of them because that's what I am. But yeah. Uh, so that was that. And now for the last part, which is my shop update. For my shop updates, if you haven't seen it, I have actually done some updates in the store. I've done a whole bunch of different things with the store and in the store. So um, I don't remember if I talked to you about this, but I thought I'd take it again. I have switched my store name. Uh, you. I have been using a craft a bit as a part of my kind of online persona since 2007, I think, uh, when I started craft blogging. And when I started with the boutique, I started with Craft Bit Creations, which is basically my YouTube channel, my craft blog, and everything. But I felt it was important for me to kind of sw switch, uh, switch it up and do the Craft a Bit dye works instead for my shop. So I'm still Craft a Bit Creations when it comes to my card making, but when it comes to my store, my needle store, my uh, hand dyed fabric store, I'm Craft a Bit um, dye works now. So I thought I'd show you some fabrics that I have been uh, dyeing up and I had people love and everything. Um, I did two series of fabrics. Um, I'm still not sure how to do it. Many dye stores today do the, um, they dye up a couple of different uh, colors and then they add them in the store and then they have on orders. Um, I still take orders both from previously dyed things but also uh, things I'm dyeing up in the future um like in or new color schemes but i do like the idea of you being able to just go to my etsy store and like pick up the fabrics and i can deliver them to the post office in just a couple of days um it's kind of how i like to shop and uh, i'm hoping to be able to give that kind of shopping experience to you 
therefore I am dying up fabric however um, fabric is expensive and having a large large quantities of pre-dyed fabrics is um, it's it's expensive having it there uh, so I don't really know how many I'm gonna dye up or how I'm gonna dye them up but right now I have uh, really two color schemes but they ended up being five different colors of fabric so I have a selection of these here I actually only have three of them here but um, you can always go over to my store and see them so I'm gonna start off with this ah, belly, belly band I store all the fabrics in plastic sleeves so that um, hair and stuff doesn't go on to them. This is my mustard colorway. Uh, it's kind of a deep mustardy color, um, just like not pure yellow and then not grayish things. It's just a mustard, a cute little mustard. Um, I have this mustard in some different sizes of linen and uh, some bigger sizes of Ida. However, the dye takes very differently to different fabrics and different fabric weights. So the mustard became butterscotch for my um, for my even wave. Ended up being more of a butterscotch, more of a li much much lighter tone. Um, and uh, I can kind of fix that by adding more dye and stuff like that. It was just a, I didn't know how the fabrics would react with the color and I wanted to do a whole, all of the different ones to see how it worked. But I do have a whole bunch of the butterscotch also. Um, and then the last color or the last color scheme actually was a green. Um, because I love greens and I thought it would be fun to play along, play with it. This is light moss, so I think this is the darkest color. And then I have dry leaf, which is a much lighter color. And the lightest one is called pumice stone. And they are same base color, but it's just different lightness of the fabrics. So, but this is the dry moss, the dry uh, light moss. The light moss I have in Iden linen. Uh, the dry leaves are in the smaller Idas. Um, and then you have the pumice stone, which is in the even weaves. I have a lot of different fabrics now. And if you also, this, uh, I think the dry leaves also comes in a 22 account hardanger. So I got hardanger, I got Ida in different sizes, I have glittery Ida, I have linen, I have glittery linen, I have even weave and I have glittery even weave. I even have the 32 count glittery even weave. Uh, all of them are in stock. Also I have some um, some pieces left from my previously dyed up uh, fabrics and I have nail needles and I also have a whole bunch of these different uh, knitting markers so if you like um, knitting markers if you like either uh, these ones which are like progress markers or if you like the one with the rings I have both in the store right now so yeah that's my full update I hope you enjoy it and I hope to see you soon until then, good night, sleep tight, do another bed bug bite. Bye!